Hey, I'm James from Smoking Dad Barbecue, and today you're in for a treat. We are going to cook some picanha on the jotisserie over direct heat. So that rotation is just gonna constantly allow those drippings to hit our Argentinian charcoal and get an amazing Maillard reaction. So I've already gone ahead and set up our Joe and prepped our picanha. Let me take you inside to show a few things you need to do to rejoin me at this point. And when you're back here, we'll be ready to throw this on the Kamado Joe. Okay, it is time to slice up our picanha and then get it on the spit so we can throw it on our Joe Tisserie. Now when I did a practice run for this cook a couple weeks ago and I wasn't recording, I did what I normally do, which is we find our picanha here, we look for which way the grain is running, and then we cut with the grain so that when we do our slices, we're cutting against the grain. What I didn't account for with that is when we put it on the spit and we curl it around, I was slicing off then again with the grain. So honestly, this didn't turn out that good. It was pretty tough. But I think the way that I cut it and the fact that we didn't dry brine that steak had a lot to do with it. So today, I've already taken the step of dry brining this overnight. If you're looking for a great salt for this, I'll put a link in the description below. It's an Amazon affiliate link. If you find it in your local grocery store, by all means, please buy it there. But it's Diamond Kosher Crystal Salt. It does a great job at tenderizing the meat without adding way too much salt content. So the idea for today's cook is we are going to cut the steaks against the grain so that when we have them curled on the spit and we take our slices down the side that we continue to be cutting against the grain. I'll use my wireless probe in order to track this cook. Let's slice these up and get them on the spit. Okay, since we have already dry brined these with salt, I'm not gonna add any extra seasoning, just keeping it traditional today with salt, and we'll add a little bit more finishing salt at the end. So why don't we go ahead and install our Jotisserie attachment and insert our wireless probe. We'll set it up and we're ready to fire up the Kamado Joe. Okay, for this setup, I filled the basket about halfway. I don't know if it's showing up with the amount of sunlight that we're getting, but with the coals banked to the back, and once we get those lit and moving around, I'll definitely push them back there. So that's gonna give us great airflow, but it's also going to allow any drippings from our picanha to fall on this Argentinian charcoal and just flavor our cook. So let's go ahead and add our fire starter. I'm gonna use a Kamado Joe Big Block starter. We'll fire it up. Okay, it's been about five minutes. Let's take a look how we're doing. Oh yeah, those coals are rocking. I actually think that's time to slow down a little bit. We're gonna save going Max Inferno mode for a little bit later on when we wanna get our sear. So I'm gonna close the top vent down to the third line and do about two fingers on the bottom. And then when the steak hits 105 on our probe, we'll go for our sear and start building up that crust. Okay, our grill is now reading just about 500 degrees. So it's time to slow things down. And here's the game plan. When I did this cook in the dry run, I went low and slow to about 110 degrees Fahrenheit internal temperature. And I was cooking around 250 degrees. Then I just cranked the heat with the dome open, hoping to get a crust. Well, the steak reached the temperature before that crust was exactly where I wanted it. It was still really good, but I think we can improve on it. So the game plan today is I'm gonna ride a little bit higher with a little bit more heat hitting the outside. I'm thinking, you know, 350 degrees to 400 degrees would be great. And when my wireless probe tells me we're at 105 degrees internal temperature, we're gonna open the dome, open the bottom vents. This is to slow down the rate of cooking and focused on building our crust. And I think that's gonna be the trick to get an amazing marred reaction on the outside of our picanha. So let me take you fast forward while we install the Joe Tisserie. 
Okay, our temperatures already have started to settle down a little bit. So let's go ahead and slide the jotisserie into place and we'll power it up and get it spinning. Okay, that's great. So again, we're gonna leave the dome closed for this first portion running around 400 degrees or so Fahrenheit. And then when it's time to go for inferno mode around 105 degrees internal temperature on our picanha in the thickest part of the biggest one here, I'll go ahead, I'll pull out the probe, open the bottom draft door, open the top door and just let that big block fly and start to work on our crust on the outside. Let's go ahead and close the dome and get this cook on the road. Okay, so as you may be able to tell, it is now time to start focusing our attention on our crust. So let me bring you up to speed to what I started two minutes ago before repositioning the camera. First, I went ahead and opened our draft door on the bottom all the way, so we are getting max airflow. Now with the dome open and the meter probe, probe excuse me, removed, we're able to focus on letting those flames come up and kiss those outside of our picanha steaks and just help get that crust to be awesome. And you can already see in two minutes of this, it's doing its work. And then lastly, using my ash tool uh, that comes with the Komodo Joe, I just pulled the ash from the back side a little bit closer into the center so that heat is concentrated right in the middle versus more of an indirect setup when it's on the back. And so now as the fat is rendering and hitting that charcoal that's burning hot, the smoke and the flavors that are coming up and trust me they're coming up because I'm standing this far away and I can smell them and they're awesome it's just flavoring our picanha steak so I'm gonna keep my eye on this but this feels like a perfect moment for some slow motion close-up sear action let me bring you a little closer so you can enjoy the experience hopefully as much as I'm enjoying it from standing right beside it All right, so as much fun as this is with that amazing sound and smells coming off of our Kamado Joe, our internal temperature is now reaching a medium rare, so it's time to get these off and let it rest. If anything, I'm worried I was watching and enjoying too much and may have overdone these while I was recording and enjoying the show. I think we'll be okay, but let's get these off the heat without any further ado. All right, it's been 10 minutes and our picanha has rested. Again, I'm a little worried I overcooked this one. If we did, my game plan for the next cook is actually just to skip the dome closed and go open the entire time as I actually think we could still use a little bit more crust and not risk overdoing the inside. But we're gonna find out together. Let me bring the camera a little closer as we slice our picanha. All right, so I got a level with you. We messed up. That happens. It's all part of the learning curve. So this is the second time that we were trying this. I thought I had figured out what went wrong the first time and how I could get a better crust, which we definitely have an improved crust, but we went and overcooked our steak. And so I think that's just part of the learning curve. One thing we could just do is delete this video and start again. But I want to share that just because, you know what? This is part of the learning curve. This is how you figure out new things, hone in your recipes. And sometimes you win, sometimes you try again. There really is no losing because I still think this will taste fantastic. So let's dig in, do a sample of our extremely overdone steak compared to where I normally like it. And we'll do a quick recap. Let's dig in. Okay, so compared to last time, a couple things much better. Despite how well done that is, the tenderness is way better than where it was last time. So I think definitely the approach that we took to make sure 
that if we're gonna carve off of the spit, that we're cutting against the grain on the spit versus normally how we would do it if we were uh, slicing a steak, that's made a huge difference. Second, the crust, we wanted a better crust and we got it. I still think we can go even further, but we are so focused on that crust and enjoying our slow-mo cooking video there, we overcooked our steak. And so as I mentioned earlier, I think the antidote to this in terms of landing on the perfect jotisserie picanha steak is to make sure that we actually, next time I'm gonna try it to dome open the whole time. Higher heat, worry about that Maillard reaction on the outside, and by the time we've got that great crust where we're happy with it, I think we'll be at that perfect medium rare. So I'm actually not as bummed out tasting it as I was just looking at it because it looks far more well done than any steak that I would normally do, but it tastes pretty great. And so all those flavors that we're getting from the drippings hitting the coals, the smoke, the fresh charcoal flavor, it, it tastes great and the tenderness is much better. So if I was blindfolded and tasted this, I'd take this any day over the last one we did, which I think photogenically looked a little bit better, but I have my work cut out for me for the next video. If you wanna see round three of this cook, where hopefully we nail it, let me know in the comments below. I mean, the worst that happens is I get to eat more steak, so it's a win-win for sure. Let me know in the comments. And while you're there, please be sure to hit that like and subscribe to catch future videos. Anyways, hope to see you then. Have a good night.